By many accounts, no one is better to qualify to head the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau than Elizabeth Warren. The Wall Street Journal says some bankers are, quote, hell-bent on putting a muzzle on the watchdog charged with overseeing the $700 billion bank bailout, which makes sense since she would be watching over them. But overwhelming support for her is still pouring in from all other quarters. Progressive groups like Americans for Financial Reform, an alliance of more than 250 organizations, are backing Warren. And BoldProgressives.org has an online petition with more than 208,000 signatures urging the president to appoint her. Even Republican senators like Bob Corker and Chuck Grassley have praised Warren on some issues, though that doesn't necessarily mean they'll support a nomination. If almost everyone outside of the bankers agrees she's the perfect, most qualified person to lead this agency, and the agency was her idea in the first place, wouldn't that make her basically the Michael Jordan of financial reform? The consensus pick as MVP? If she in fact is Michael Jordan of consumer protection, why hasn't the President Obama given her the go-ahead to play ball? Why would you want to keep Jordan off this team? Unless you don't want to win. Joining us now, professor at Harvard Law School and former Solicitor General for Ronald Reagan, Charles Fried, and syndicated columnist David Sirota. Welcome. Um, let me start Thank with you. you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Let me start with you, Charles. Uh, you know, you worked for Reagan. Uh, uh, the banks say Elizabeth Warren is liberal and would uh, overregulate, etc. You don't agree with that position? What she would do is what Congress passed the legislation to have done and the banks hated it. The banks fought it. They poured millions and millions of dollars through their lobbyists to defeat it, and they didn't. So now it's the law, and having lost uh, the battle, they think they can win the war by turning the, uh, the agency, the Consumer Protection Agency, into uh, the financial version of the Mineral Man Management Services, which gave us the BP blowout. So, David, let me go to you then. If this is a, it seems to be a consensus, but certainly every progressive in the country seems to agree. I don't know. I literally don't know anyone who does. There might be a couple out there. Uh, and then uh, Republicans don't even seem like they're that against it. You know, of course, they'll filibuster anything. But what's the rationale here? Why doesn't Obama want her on the team? Well, the reason well, it's a very is good question, and, and, and I think the answer is is that it has to do with who is in the Obama administration, uh, and that's a fair question. You know, the Obama administration has put a lot of people from the banking industry into the administration, and if you think that those people uh, still have connections to the banking industry, which I think is a fair assumption, then it becomes pretty clear as to why uh, they wouldn't want or they would be hesitant to put in somebody as independent and as eminently qualified and as tough as Elizabeth Warren in that position. So, Professor Fried, let me go back to you. On that because you know is it that uh, the Obama as the Obama administration I think that's says a little cynical. wait I think is it that's that they're cynical well that's what I want to ask you about is is it that they uh, are worried that they can't get it past a Republican Congress or does Tim Geithner think oh my God the bankers are going to yell at us and we're not going to be able to collect political money etc it's cynical but it's also real in terms of collecting campaign contributions that's for sure no I, I, I don't think that's it I think what it is is they're afraid of the Republicans they're afraid that the Republicans are gonna shut everything down here's the scenario uh, the president does what he ought to do which is to nominate Elizabeth okay the uh, Republicans stall and they filibuster which they have the votes to do, and she, uh, she doesn't get through. The president then does a recess appointment, and the Republicans go nuts. And uh, they and say, what? okay, we're going to shut down everything. Everything, everything, everything. And they have the power to do that. And they've shown that they're perfectly willing to. Now, that's a fair point. So, David, but w what's the downside of that. So the bankers say, I'm sorry, the Republicans, that's a funny Freudian slip, say, hey, we're here to protect the bankers and we're going to fight tooth and nail. We're going to stop everything in its tracks until we make sure that the bankers are happy and Elizabeth Warren is not nominated here. How is that a political loss for Democrats? Oh, yeah. uh -oh. 
Well, well, of course, it, it's not. And that's why I go back to the idea that this is something deeper. You're right. To have the fight with Republicans over nominating Elizabeth Warren, that's a good fight. Electorally and politically, the Democrats should have, should want to have, and the Obama administration should want to have. So you go back to, well, why wouldn't they want to have it? Well, the answer is, I think, is because this is an, an administration that has been too close to the bankers. Uh, they passed a big uh, uh, financial regulatory reform bill, but they, but they can basically uh, look like they've succeeded in a progressive populist way with the passage of that bill and then actually do a favor to the banking industry by making sure that the regulators who are there to enforce it uh, aren't people like Elizabeth Warren. I think this is a two steps. I, th I think they're trying to have it both ways. All right, Professor Charles Fried and David Sirota, interesting conversation as always. Thank you, guys.